Accepting responsibility for Klandathu, Sky Marshal Deans resigns. His successor, Sky Marshal Tahat Maru, outlines her new strategy. To fight the bug, we must understand the bug. Man, Starship Troopers is a great movie, huh? Special effects that stand the test of time, that wonderful Verhovian satire of a fascist society, and over-the-top action and gore like you've never seen before. The only reason I brought it up, though, was for that quotation. To fight the bug, we must understand the bug. A major plot point of the film is the major losses suffered by humanity when they rush into the war unexpected, not realizing the powers and abilities of the arachnids. The current Sky Marshal steps down to be replaced by a new one, who proclaims that in order to win, you need to understand how the bugs fight. This is a line of thought that can be applied very accurately to Flat Earthers. This to me is the crux of the matter. This is why they always fail. This is why they lose the debates. This is why they're so easily fooled by woo peddlers and charlatans. Because they don't understand the bug. Flat Earthers have a starting point of ignorance. They can't debunk the heliocentric model because they don't even understand how it's supposed to work. Today, I'd like to explore the ignorance and intellectual dishonesty of Flat Earthers and explain why this always causes them to make fools of themselves. First, let's take a look at a debate between Father Skeptic and some guy called Hip Hop Hippie. Skeptic wanted to immediately establish Hippie's level of intellectual honesty. He wanted to see how well Hippie could explain the heliocentric model in order to support his claims against it. Let's watch. Okay, I have a, I have a question for you. Can okay. you demonstrate a rock sphere with water around its surface spinning with pressure gradients in a zero G vacuum. Can you demonstrate sure. that? Look at the uh, yeah, we demonstrate it every day on the Earth. I'm talking about an actual demonstration, an experiment. I I know what you're I know what you're talking about, uh, hip hop hippie. I, I know what you're talking about, but let me let me ask you just a question. This is an intellectual, honest question. Wait, okay? wait, wait. Is, um, that is that a no? Is no, that a no? No, no, no. Wait, hold on. No? I didn't I didn't say no. I, no, that's not a no. Now, do you understand that in our model? There's an Earth. In our model, not what you believe, but in our heliocentric model, there's an Earth, very, 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 very large Earth, whose mass is like 6 times 10 to the 27th kilograms or something like that. It's, it's extremely huge, right? So in our model, that has a gravitational field and a gravitational force pulling down on, on things with as massive a of a body as possible, do you honestly think that your question can even be demonstrated if it could? Well, it's not my fault. That's your fault. That's that's what you believe. So why can't no, you demonstrate no. it? And there we have it. Hippie thinks his question is valid because he's heard it asked by every Flat Earth channel he's ever watched. Problem is, the question is not valid. If it were rephrased, his question is basically this. Can you demonstrate a working model of Earth on Earth? Or as Fight the Flat Earth phrased it with Nathan Thompson, can you demonstrate what happens in the sky without pointing at the sky? This is completely absurd. It's like asking to demonstrate the chemical properties of beer using water. It's pretty clear just from this clip that Hip Hop Hippie has absolutely no idea how the heliocentric model is actually supposed to work. In, in our model, what holds the water to the, to, the, to the spherical rock? What holds it? Oh, you're fake. Force gravity. Okay, so and, and okay, gravity, right? So, what's the gravitational pull of the Earth, and what defines the strength of the gravitational pull of the Earth according well, to our model? Well, I don't, I don't know because your model. Okay, no, oh, then, okay, so you're ignorant to your, so you're ignorant to the scientific consensus. I'm not ignorant. To, I'm not ignorant to the globe model. Dude. Absolutely, you are. The point doesn't go much further than this because Hippie is vaguely aware that he's being caught in a trap. So, instead of admitting that he doesn't understand the heliocentric model, which he just demonstrated that he doesn't, he lashes out. He gets angry and starts screaming like a triggered monkey in an attempt to hide the fact that he's been exposed. It isn't working though. Hip hop hippie, okay? It's time to put away your intellectual dishonesty for just a moment. I'm not asking you to agree that gravity exists. I'm not asking you to say that the Earth is a sphere. I'm not asking you to do anything at this point except for validate what you believe to be my model. 
the model that you want me to demonstrate. This is where we need to start first, because if I can't demonstrate it, I need to have a reason why. Is that correct? So now, Team Skeptic tries to change tack a little. He's rephrasing the question to see if this is all maybe just a simple misunderstanding. However, Hippie still isn't getting it. Team is trying to demonstrate why the question Hippie is asking doesn't make sense. But Hippie just goes on a typical rant of how the model is bunk, even though he's showing that he doesn't even know what the model is. Team is just trying to establish that if you have the knowledge of how things are supposed to work based on what we understand. So based on the model that we have, the, the answer is gravity. Yes. So based on the model that we have, what you're proposing wouldn't be something that could ever be done because the prevailing force that is acting on everything is the force of gravity coming from the mass of the earth. Nothing else happening within that is going to um, you know, have a greater uh, gravitational attraction than the mass of the earth because that is the biggest mass around. Everything is within that gravitational well. So, right. Does that, does that make it clear? We're not asking you to believe it. We're just asking you to understand what, what the model that we subscribe to actually represents. Huh? Is that oh, I'm sorry. Is that man. I was sleeping. I was sleeping, man. You're talking about, you're talking about fairyland bullshit, dude. And back to the rhetoric. This is starting to look deliberate. He can call it fairyland bullshit all he wants, but he doesn't even know how the fairyland bullshit is supposed to work. He doesn't understand the bug, so he can't fight the bug. Pay attention. Hold on, hold on. Are you looking at the, the Earth's horizon, or are you looking at the atmospheric horizon? Because you know that there's a, a thin layer of atmosphere that goes around our Earth, right? So Dude, when you look horizon. up from that height, when you look up from that height, then you see the black meet the blue. Guess what you're looking at? You're not looking at the ground. You do realize that, right? There is no the fucking horizon. Earth coming up to eye level, dipshit. <laughs> And the horizon is curved. You aren't looking at the ground. You're looking at the atmosphere meeting space. What it, what's your explanation for that? Where's the horizon? Why is not the hundred plus thousand feet? Where did all that fall off from? Why is that not coming up to the top? Now we have evidence of a new level of ignorance. Hippie doesn't understand that from space, there would be more than one visible horizon line. As Team said, the atmosphere can be seen from a distance and will appear to be the line at which the Earth meets space. However, the actual ground level is going to be a few hundred kilometers below that. Again, we see that Hippie has absolutely no understanding of how things should look on a globe. Therefore, he's easily convinced that it doesn't look the way it should. Please don't call us retards when you get the most basic of things wrong. Once you get some no, right, you get then the you most can basic of things wrong. It's, it's, I, I it's just, so I just simple. Proved you wrong about you just fucking just proved you wrong everything. About you convolute level, you convolute flat, you convolute horizon, you convolute curve, you convolute everything, dude. That's all you guys do. Y'all are the ones that No, you do that. that I, I don't okay. think that word means right. what you think it means. And to cap it all off, we even have some wonderful evidence that Hippie is speaking from a place of linguistic ignorance. If you can't even figure out the difference between conflate and convolute, I think you need to get off the goddamn stage. You have no idea what you're talking about, and you've provided enough proof of your place of ignorance. You've shown that you are the perfect fodder for any flat earth con man. You can repeat their buzzwords, but you can't actually explain how anything actually works. Let's move on to a different flurf and see if we can find the same ignorance yet again. Here we have the all-time heavyweight Reds rhetoric up against David Muniz, who is a prime example of ignorance, poor education, and gullibility. Yeah, um, for the for the first one, he, he said he was saying um observable curvature, but I, I was talking about measurable curvature we've seen that anywhere i mean i mean a lot of a lot of times we we see a lot of different things um and, and just to see that is not really not really it doesn't really say much i mean I, I want to see measurable curvature now we see a different kind of defense mechanism against the evidence what he is responding to is red's famous tampa bay blink test in which he shows around 300 feet of the tampa bay skyline hidden below the curve of the earth like every flurfer david has probably seen a number of similar blink tests showing boats and buildings disappearing below the water and so his instinct is to deflect from it. He claims he would rather see a curved horizon line that can be measured, as it's more precise the way he sees it. However, Reds has made note of the word measurable, and he has his counterattack ready. Okay, cool. 
Uh, you said a measurable curvature. Um, the curvature that I showed you is measurable. Not only did I show it to you, but I measured it, as I said. And the way that we measure it is because we have a visual reference. Those visual reference are the buildings in question. The height of those buildings is known. Curvature calculation, such as square root of r plus x to the second minus r to the second, is also known. You can apply those values to see if what you're seeing is actually legit according to the round earth model. So not only are you seeing curvature, you can measure curvature. And as I said previously, there will be a 3D model being made of my observation to show how my observations comport with the round earth model. So now REDS is focusing on the mathematics to show that, in fact, waterline blink tests can be measured. My assumption here is that he is attempting to force David to bring up excuses for the blink test. He wants David to blame refraction, atmospheric distortion, or perspective. Unfortunately, David doesn't take the bait. He just ends up babbling about how Red's footage basically isn't good enough. It's some of the laziest goalpost shifting I've ever seen. One more time, shall we? Let's go to one of the biggest dumpster fires I've ever seen. A conglomeration of a number of channels, but the two to focus on are Red's rhetoric and Dell from Beyond the Imaginary Curve. Real quickly, because this is pertinent, can you please tell the audience what pressure is because they're asking for it? So if, well, I have a conversation if they don't know what you're talking about. Can you give them a definition for pressure, please? We made Anyone? a point on how, how we go to physics and we're told we live in a pressurized environment that's coexisting next to a vacuous, empty space. Negative pressure, zero pressure. Now, Mr. Red's rhetoric here has just shown a video of a supposed rocket in our pressurized environment and explained how there's a <clears throat> pressure gradient in the gases, which we understand. We, we have quite yeah. clearly. What is, what, is what is pressure? Steve, people are listen, asking you, what okay. is pressure? Steve, listen. The claim of the global I'm, I'm, I am model, listening. We're asking you a question. What is pressure? The claim of the globe. I'm, I'm responding. To the, the way I'm not asking about the claim. Done. I'm not asking about the claim. Can you tell us what pressure is, yes or no? If not, ask somebody else. Can okay, he doesn't know. Is, Gavin. Yes, that's the question. It takes a solid minute for Dell's defense mechanism to kick in. I think it's the roids but he eventually gets there. He's not even listening to Steve, it seems. He's just regurgitating information because he hears pressure as a buzzword. And he knows that when he hears that word, he must parrot his, the claim of the globe is that a pressurized environment can coexist next to a vacuum. Bullshit. Oh, lassie got glassed and no cunt leaves here till we find out what cunt did it. That man seems beyond all hope. He has no agency anymore. Thank you very much. All right, so let's try this one, one more time. As Gav just said, gases in a vacuum will expand outward rapidly. What we saw here was a rocket having its gases illuminated by the sun expanding rapidly more and more so as it got higher and higher and higher. This shows a, a decreasing atmospheric pressure as altitude is increased. And guess what? Since the rocket didn't blow up when it hit anything, I guess that means there wasn't anything there to decrease the atmospheric pressure other than the weight of the air itself and the fact that there was less of it. So with that being said, given that you can see this in reality, objective reality, remember, that's what we're dealing with here. And I was able to film this in objective reality. And the fact that you can see this in objective reality, please tell me how you're now going to disagree with objective reality. Go. Was that on a vacuum? Was that on a vacuum? Was that, was that, that video was showing in... something in a vacuum? Yeah, that video I showed you was something going into vacuum. Prove it. You stupid. No, I'm not. What's 9 plus 10? 21. You stupid. Oh, for God's sake, Dell. You can see it again. Dell doesn't understand how atmospheric pressure works, so when Reds begins explaining that aspect of his video, Dell's brain just shuts off. He did hear vacuum, as it's the one thing he latched onto. He then, without realizing it, asks Red to repeat what he just said, because that's the only way he can keep this circular dumpster fire burning. Let's go back to the Starship Troopers metaphor. Flat Earthers are trapped, like the fascist warmongering world of the Federation, in an eternal war they can never win. They never had that brief moment of hope when they captured a brain bug and had an opportunity to gain some understanding, but the Federation fumbled it so they ended up in the same place anyway. 
They're both in a cycle of war with something they don't even understand to begin with. And again, to fight the bug, you must understand the bug. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, which is Dead Kennedy in Space. If you want to support me further, consider donating on Patreon or purchasing some of my work through Amazon or Teespring. Thank you, and I'll see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. Live there. On the mode of dust. Suspended. In a sunbeam. In a fast cosmic arena.